Okay, this is about standing waves. First of all, what are they? A standing wave is a wave that remains stationary, and they're sometimes called stationary waves, in between two fixed points. This is what a standing wave would look like, that black wave there. It's created when you get two travelling waves, in this case one red, one blue, going in opposite directions. And when they meet, they superpose and interfere with each other, either constructively or destructively. So what can you notice about that black wave there? Well, it's got little points where it's not moving, those little red dots. And we have distinct rise in amplitude when the blue and the red waves interfere constructively. Same thing happens in a guitar. If you pinch a guitar in the middle, the waves travel up and down between the bridge and the nut of the guitar, which is those two white little stripes on the guitar. Uh, and they interfere, causing a rise in amplitude and a nice bit of sound. And if you zoom into guitar strings and look at them closely, you'll see there are parts of them that don't move, like the red dots in the diagram above. So it's important that you can describe how it's produced. You need two travelling waves of roughly, if not equal, the same frequency and amplitude moving in opposite directions. In order to do this, you're going to need waves reflecting, at least one wave reflecting on fixed points, and the waves are going to need to be able to interfere. So what we can see is the waves interfering constructively. So if you look at the points where the black amplitude, the standing wave, jumps up, you'll see that the two waves meet peak to peak, interfering with each other. They're maximas called antinodes. When the wave destructively interferes, we get minimas. So if you look at the red and the blue waves just where the red dots are, the nodes, the minimas, they've always got equal and opposite amplitude. So when the red wave is at the top, the blue wave is right at the bottom, opposite it, so they interfere destructively. Interestingly enough, the distance between two nodes is equal to half the wavelength, so the distance between three nodes is the wavelength on a standing wave. Experiment you might have done in class, there's a link to it here is Meld's experiment, so you have a vibration generator and a rope under tension. And when you apply a vibration with a freak signal generator, it moves up and down. So you can pause the video for a minute if you want to read all this. Um, but yeah, when you, the fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency at which a standing wave will form. It's also known as the first harmonic. And then if you multiply that frequency by two or three or four or five, you'll get the first second you'll get the second, third, fourth, fifth harmonic. Another experiment you can do with a microwave emitter, which is kind of poorly uh, displayed as this blue antenna here. And microwaves, like any waves, can reflect. So as microwaves reflect off that metal screen on the right there you can detect nodes and antinodes as you move a receiver between them. The receiver would pick up maximas and minimas. So you can measure the wavelength of the microwaves by marking out every antinode or node, and then once again, the distance between two nodes or antinodes would be the half of a wavelength for the microwaves. Another cool video you can link to here for a Rubens tube, uh, which happens when you fill a tube with gas, uh, propane, and use it like a big row of Bunsen burners and then play music down it. And the music will compress the gas and squeeze it at different pressures through the wave. Another one that a lot of people don't realise, a great example of standing waves is a microwave. It uses uh, interference of microwaves, so whatever the dials are, and the, uh, there's usually a microwave emitter there, and it bounces off one side of the microwave, and the waves interfere, passing on energy to the water molecules of the food, causing it to heat up. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that.